And so we now have safe schools in Nigeria, but we also have safe schools in other parts of the world as a result of the pressure that is being brought to bear by some really enlightened people. And I now want you to hear from Woodland and Luciano, who are our Latin American global youth ambassadors, who are going to tell us about what's happening with safe, nonviolent schools that are being created in Latin America. Uh, thank you, Salome. Thank you for being with us today. For this segment, I would like to invite to the stage the First Lady of Panama, the Ministers of Education of Costa Rica and El Salvador, and the President of FONSIPA in Guatemala and Representative of UNICEF. This next segment is very important because the Latin America and the Caribbean region has one of the highest hate rates of armed violence in all regions. And this is putting at risk our development and our education. In some countries in the region, nearly 60% of students fear of attending school because of violence. At least a quarter of all students and teachers have been victims of violence. This violence disproportionately impacts adolescent boys causing them to drop out. Indeed it is, and according with the map of violence in Brazil, in 2012, 30,000 young people were killed, where 70-70% of them were young and black. And this is very important. This is happening in all parts of Brazil. So, also in regarding to education, our education in Brazil, we have a lot of challenges. For instance, we're lacking a lot of daycares right at the beginning of education. We are having a high rate of, of young people dropping out of schools because of the lack of, of, of infrastructure in schools, infrastructure in families. We have 3.9 million of young people out of school in Brazil. This is very urgent. And if we do not, do not act now, we are under the risk of, instead of having young people in school, in children in school, having them in prisons or even do not living at all. In Haiti, we have been focusing on reducing violence in Haiti because since last year, we had a lot of stabbings in school. Um, and the students, what we had created, we created a lot of the Minister of Education, Mr. Nesmi Maniga, he came up with a lot of activities to get to have all students stay in school by creating activities like competition, a singing competition, we have soccer tournaments. And this year we launched something for all public schools in Haiti where every student will wear the same uniforms. And that will help to make sure that we all look the same, there's no difference. So basically we have been fighting a lot to reduce violence. Although we are struggling with a lot of problems when it comes to fundings, but we are trying to bring, to reduce violence in Haiti because it has been a, a lot of problems. A lot of kids has been stabbed and then we don't know what to do. So basically, this is very important to us. Right now, I would like to invite to the, the Minister of Costa Rica to the stage. The First Lady of Panama. El Salvador and the president of SIPA and UNI the representative of UNICEF. <laughs> I would like the first lady of Panama to say a few words about us. Word about. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? 
nice to meet you. My name is Lorena, and I'm the first lady from Panama. And we're just here as Latinos to make sure that we all, all our children, all over the world, goes to school. Education is the only tool. Listen to this very carefully, and I want to send this message to everywhere, 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 all the first ladies and all the, the leaders of all the world. Education is the only tool, the most important tool to get out of the circle of poverty and extreme poverty. This is empowering our people in our nations. It's empowering of women so we can decide what to do with our lives and when and how. And it's not only for the primary education. We have to end secondary education and we have to end university too. Let's empower everybody and really send that message of this importance that it's the only way to really succeed in life. Education, people. My, your minds, open your minds. One world, we're one world, all united. One soul, all united. And let's not, let's just break that barrier of different countries, all world, all together, one only people, one government for everybody, not just so many differences between us, no more. We as first ladies, we become, in some of our countries, like the mothers of, of all our children. And let's do it right. Let's treat everyone and all the children everywhere as our own. No differences, equality. Thank you. And now I would like to invite the Minister of Education from Costa Rica to say a few words. Thank you. A five-year-old boy answered the, his teacher, kindergarten teacher question, what do you want to be when you grow up? He answered, I want to be a hitman. Hundred, hundreds of teachers have to deal with violence every day in the classroom around the school in Latin America. This reality can change. This reality must change. That's why Costa Rica today is joining with joy, with enthusiasm, but especially with hope, the campaign, this initiative of strong school and communities. We need to have safe learning environment for our teachers, for our students, for our teenagers. We join the campaign and we invite other governments, civil society organizations, private sectors, teachers, students, world leaders to join the campaign. In Costa Rica, our comprehensive strategy against violence in schools with the support of UNICEF is called Con la Educación Yo Me Apunto. With education, I'm all in. We are all in. With this campaign, I'm all in. Costa Rica is all in. Are you all in? Thank you. And now, El Salvador. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Salvador Pais. I am the president of FUNSEPA, a privately funded foundation that's deeply committed to education in Guatemala. We've made much progress around the globe on education, and I think we should celebrate that. I certainly celebrate the progress that we've made in Guatemala with the current Ministry of Education and with the help and uh, support of UNICEF. As the minister from Costa Rica told us, our schools, uh, kids face unsafe environments. They face the potential for violence in or around school, and I think that we need to do something about that. What do you think? The Strong Schools program in Guatemala, started in January of this year, seeks to do exactly that. It seeks to provide all of our children the opportunity to attend a school that is safe, that is supportive, that is nurturing to their learning. And I think that that's terribly important. And I also think that that's not just a job for the governments of the world. That's not just a job for the Ministry of Education. That's all of our jobs. I think that parents, 
teachers, certainly governments, but also the private sectors of the world need to get involved with this cause. And I would ask today all of my fellow uh, members of the business community, entrepreneurs, CEOs, anybody that believes in this cause to get involved today because it is terribly important that we do so. Every child should attend a school. Every child deserves quality education. Every child deserves to attend a safe school. Thank you. On, on behalf of all the ambassadors, I would like to thank you for your commitment. We will be supporting you to end violence and promote safe schools and communities. We look forward to the success of this initiative over the year. Today, we say no more as the Global Business Coalition for Education and UNICEF Latin America and Caribbean launch a new strong school and community initiative five policies, bringing partners to support government and start community dialogues and programs. Safe schools in Latin America. The root problem to be addressed is gang violence and the rise in youth homicide. The initiative will seek to engage stakeholders from business, NGOs, and government to identify and strengthen policies and programs that effectively create safe schools and protect learning environments. Support governments to improve their capacity to fulfill the education rights of children and adolescents, which include ensuring the schools are safe. To promote an open dialogue among families, children, and adolescents authorities, the private sector, and communities, as well as to build long-standing responses. Thank you very much.